Welcome to the latest episode of the Visa Hour. Today we are branching out from the topic of visas and we'll actually be discussing some issues related to U.S. citizenship. Particularly, we're going to talk about the Consular Report of Birth Abroad, also known as the CRBA or CRIBA for short, and we'll also be talking about derivative claims to U.S. citizenship. I'm Greg, and I'm a consular officer in the American Citizen Services section. I'm one of the consular officers that assist Americans with consular report of birth abroad as well as passports. I'm joined today by one of my colleagues, uh, for, who's also from the consular section, right. and we will answer some of the questions that we've gathered online. Hi everyone, I'm Reg, and I am with the American Citizen Services, handling citizenship and passport services. So Greg, let's start it off before we answer questions. What is CRBA? That is a very good question. <laughs> um, the CRBA or the CRIBA is, uh, it's a document that the U.S. government produces that is a claimed, uh, it's a document of U.S. citizenship. Mm -hmm. um, it is issued to children born overseas outside the U.S. under the age of 18 who have a U.S. citizen parent um, and who meet the legal requirement for acquiring U.S. citizenship at birth. Um, it, in many aspects, it's similar to a birth certificate issued in the United States. It's recognized by the Social Security Administration, by schools and other institutions uh, within the United States as a valid claim to U.S. citizenship. That's right. And um, if not being mentioned, these uh, certificates are only being issued for um, children 17 years old and below. Yes. Okay, so at this point, we are now ready and uh, we can start answering your questions. So the first question we have comes from Stephen Chan, uh, who posts a question on Facebook. And his question is, I have a daughter in the Philippines, I have a daughter in the Philippines out of wedlock, and she was born six months before I became a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. Is she qualified to be a U.S. citizen? And if not, are there other forms I can complete? Um, the, the short answer to that question is, um, no, she does not qualify for U.S. citizenship at birth. Right. Uh, the reason is in order to qualify for a CRIBA, in order to qualify as a U.S. citizen at birth, uh, one of the parents has to be a documented U.S. citizen by the time the child is born. Um, that does not mean that she may never become a U.S. citizen, but it is not through birth. There uh, other avenues of immigration that might lead to U.S. citizenship, but she won't be eligible for receiving a consular report of birth abroad. That's right. And so we have another one from Art Mascardo on Twitter. My two-year-old grandson is natural-born U.S. citizen, and his parents are H-1B visa holder. Will they be deported when their H-1B expires? I'm not sure this is... Well, I think this is not a CRBA-related yes. question, but Greg? Uh, yeah, this is definitely a visa-related question okay. <laughs> um, and also dealing with uh, deportation, which is handled uh, by the Department of Homeland Security. Um, I would recommend uh, that you submit this question uh, via email to our, our non-immigrant visa unit. Mm -hmm. um, they are the ones that could give you a little more insight into that. Uh, we don't want to give any wrong information uh, on this topic because I understand it, it's an important topic to people. Um, but uh, that I, would, I would suggest submitting it online and you can get a, a more complete answer. So our next question uh, from email uh, states, how can I make an appointment for a CRIBA or an adult derivative application? Reg, what's the best way they can do that? Well, actually, there's only one way for you to have an appointment for the CRBA or adult derivative application, and that is if you visit our website and go to the link of the American Citizen Services. So our website address is www.manila.usembassy.com. Dot state dot gov. When you get to that site, you look for the tab where it says U.S. Citizen Services. You click on that, a drop-down list will appear. You click either Consular Report of Birth Abroad Application or Derivative Citizenship. And from there on, that link will show you how you could actually book an appointment to uh, file for the application with uh, the U.S. Embassy for CRBA. Okay, so our next question is, 
your online system shows that all appointment slots are blocked and or full, which is uh, always. <laughs> <laughs> so can I call your office to book an appointment? Can they, uh, Greg? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we, we do a lot of these appointments, and, and people often do see that, the, uh, that our online calendar is full. We, we do open up new appointments on a regular basis. Yes. Um, we, if it's an emergency situation, you can um, attempt to call or, or come by the embassy, but as a general rule, we operate on appointment system only. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, um, the best thing to do is to go online. If you're having technical problems with the scheduling website or if you have an emergency, uh, then yes, you can contact us and we can do our best to help you. And not only that, as a reminder, if ever you've already booked an appointment and you accidentally booked uh, a double double appointment, please do contact the American Citizen Services section to inform the, us of this because that slot will have to be open to the public for them to make use of it. Um, or if in any case you think you will not be able to make it on your um, booked appointment, uh, please do let us know either by calling us or sending us an email and we'll open or we'll cancel that appointment for you so that the other people can use it. And our next question, uh, similar question, can I come to the embassy without an appointment? Um, again, we discourage uh, people coming without appointments just because our services are offered on an appointment basis. Um, but again, if there's an emergency or if you're an American citizen who does have a question, um, then we can, um, we can talk to you. We may not be able to accommodate you that same day, but we can at least uh, give you some instructions on the best way to proceed. Great. Oh, and before that, let me just correct uh, the website address that I've given earlier. The right address is www.manila.usembassy.gov. Again, that's www.manila.usembassy.gov. Okay. okay, so our next question would be from an email um, and I am, and this is the this is the question. I am the, a U.S. citizen parent, but I won't be in the country on the day of the appointment. Can my child's other parent, who happens to be not a U.S. citizen, submit the application for me? And the answer is <laughs> yes. Um, if you're the U.S. citizen parent um, and you cannot be here for the appointment for whatever reason, the other parent. Uh, can submit forms on your behalf. Um, depending on the paperwork, we may ask for uh, some notarized forms for you to submit. Um, right. And we do have all these instructions on our website. We do encourage both parents to be there if possible, but we understand uh, that's not always the case. Um, and so if, that it, if the U.S. citizen parent is uh, living or working outside of the Philippines and cannot make it, mm -hmm. um, then the other parent can bring the child for the appointment. That's right. So regardless of citizenship of the parents, um, they can submit the application as long as you do have the appointment and make sure that you have the proper requirements with you ready you've completed all the forms so that that uh, when the non um, sorry the non-us citizen parent appears at the embassy then uh, the uh, american citizen services staff will be able to accommodate the application okay our next question actually came from the from youtube m umbro asks i am an american but my daughter's birth certificate lists me as filipino Will that affect her getting a passport and a social security number? Reg, why don't you answer that one? Um, actually, no, it will not have any negative effect when um, the child applies for a U.S. passport or a social security number. Uh, however, please make sure, though, that the U.S. citizen parent will be able to provide us documentary proof of his U.S. citizenship. Um, that may be, as example, would be a, a U.S. birth certificate, no, not that because he's a Filipino, right? So yes, if ever Filipino, a naturalization so. certificate, a certificate of citizenship, or a U.S. US passport. passport. Yes. Okay, so for our next question, I don't live in Manila. So where else can I file the CRBA application besides U.S. Embassy? Are there any other facilities, Greg, that we can Actually, use? there are. Uh, if, if you live in the Cebu area, we do have a consular agency in Cebu, mm -hmm. um, and so that is uh, one of our offices where you can submit 
uh, the, the CRIBA applications. Right. Um, the other option is uh, the American Citizen Service Section um, on regular basis does outreach visits to other parts of the Philippines. Yes. Uh, and, and when we go to, to other locations, we will advertise it and we will accept uh, applications for CRIBAs, for passports mm -hmm. um, at those outreach visits. Uh, so there are there are options outside of coming to Manila uh, if that's going to be uh, be a hardship for people, um, and again we we advertise those opportunities and we also have information about our consular agency in Cebu. Right. So make sure to visit uh, the website daily for announcements or contact your wardens um, within your areas to find out if there are any upcoming outreaches for. American citizens, um, and you'll be so that you'll be ready with your applications during the outreaches. Okay. So the next question is: Does my child have to come to the interview, and what are their what requirements do I need to prepare? Uh, for the first question, does my child have to come into the interview? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, that is a requirement. Uh, as the consular officer, we do actually have to see the child. So the child does have to come and we understand some uh, people may bring small babies they may be sleeping that's fine but we we do need to actually observe the child uh, now in terms of what are the requirements why don't you answer that well with the requirements we actually have a lot and so what we've thought of is posting a PDF file of what we call the checklist of requirements we have two sets of checklist one is for a consular report of birth abroad wherein I think it's a three-page form where um, all the supporting documents, forms that you need, fees that you need to be ready for are listed on that checklist. Um, the subject, if I'm not, you will be able to see that on the website. It's uh, entitled Checklist for Consular Report of Birth Abroad Application. So when you click on that, you actually need to print that out and you have to bring it with you on your appointment. Now the other checklist is for the derivative citizenship. Um, that one is totally separate from consular report of birth abroad application because this one pertains to adult applicants. Again, you will have to you can um, check that through the website and uh, just click on it, print it out. Um, there would be a list of the items that you need to be ready for. It's also stated there that you need to provide originals and photocopies of your documents. So make sure to review the checklist carefully and the fees are there you'll be able to find out um, what documentary requirements you need to prepare for so I think that is actually an yes. essential part of the application yes please please check the uh, go through the checklist yes. and it's review very, everything very because if you come prepared it makes it uh, easier for for you and it makes it easier for us to be able to provide the service for you yes so um, now we go to the next question um, I am not married to the other parent of my child. Does that other parent need to be present during the appointment? Hmm. As, as a general <laughs> rule, we do want both parents to be at uh, the appointment. The, uh, the consular officers do want to be able to speak with, with both parents. Yes. Um, and so uh, we, we do encourage both parents, regardless of, of whether they're married or not, whether we do encourage both the parents married. Uh, to be present if at all possible. Yes, um, though I must say that whenever we encounter, well, most of the applicants that we encounter for this type of application, it's usually just one parent who appears because one parent may probably be in the United States or in a different country. Then again, as long as you have the supporting documents with you, um, regardless if you're married or not, make sure you're prepared and we'll make sure to facilitate our services to you. Okay. The next question says, can I apply for a passport when I come in for my child's CRIBA appointment? Um, that's a very easy one to answer <laughs> because the answer is yes, you can apply for a passport at the same time. You're not required to apply for a passport. Some people do just apply for the, uh, the CRIBA um, mm -hmm. and, and can do the passport later. Um, but for many people, applying for both at the same time um, is convenient and easy because then we can it saves hand, time. yeah it saves yeah. time uh, and energy because we can do it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's true. It saves you from making another trip because if you do them separately, um, the first thing that we uh, accommodate is of course the CRBA application because we we make the the children U.S. citizens first and for them to 
travel to the United States, then they would need eventually a passport. So if you apply for it separately, then you will have to wait till the CRBA gets approved. Then from then on, you will have to book another appointment. But this time, it will have to be for a passport application. And the child will have to be present for the passport right. interview as well. So, uh, so it's better just to do them all at the same Together. time. Yeah, that's what we recommend. So um, the next question is from, a, from Twitter. Jing Shal asks, I am an American and my daughter's birth certificate says I'm Filipino. Will this cause problems applying for her uh, a document, which I think was already answered yeah, earlier? That, yes. It's basically the same, whether it's for CRBA, a passport, a social security number. Um, whatever is on the birth certificate, if it says they're a Filipino national, as long as you can prove that you are a U.S. citizen, show that to us and we'll actually just refer on what document you're showing. And the next one would be, uh, I think it's a very easy question. Where do they get the forms? Where can they actually get it? Our website. That is the easiest place <laughs> to find our forms. Uh, everything uh, you need to apply for a CRIBA and for a Passport can be found online um, at That's our right. website. There is a section on the website. I think it's at the right side of the of the link of the site where application forms are stated. There are different forms that you need. If it's for uh, a consular report of birth, a broad application, then you need the DS-2029 form. Um, if the parents are not married when the child was born, then you would, uh, American citizen fathers will have to fill out what we call the DS-5507 form or the Affidavit of Paternity and Physical Presence. Um, at the same time, if you want to apply for a, a passport together with the CRBA, then you will have to download the DS-11 form, that's the U.S. Passport Application Form. And if you will not, like if one of the parents will not be available during the appointment, uh, the form DS-3053 is a requirement. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of forms there, involved there in are. applying. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, so the next question, can I use a credit card to pay the application fees for the CRIBA and or the passport? Again, a very easy one to answer. Yes. Uh, we do have a cashier at the American Citizen Service section, and mm -hmm. the cashier does accept uh, credit cards as well as cash. Yes, cash in peso or in dollars. dollars it yes. depends on the rate on the day that you apply, so just make sure to bring extra. Yes. Okay, so we have another question from a Facebook um, yeah, holder, Angie Anderson, a Filipino who became a U.S. citizen whose passport was released here at the U.S. Embassy in Manila and is now planning to go to the United States. Does she still need other documentation from the U.S. Embassy if she plans to go to the U.S.? Um, I think this is a passport-related question. Yes, uh, and if I'm understanding the, uh, the question correctly, mm -hmm. um, if, if someone has a U.S. passport, um, that is their proof of U.S. citizenship. Exactly. So there is really no other uh, documentation uh, that would need to be required to travel to the U.S. Just, they'll, make they'll, sure, though, that, just make sure, though, that the U.S. passport is valid. <laughs> that is very true. It makes sure it's yes. not an expired uh, passport. But with the U.S. passport, you'll be able to enter the U.S. at the port of entry. Okay. Okay, so our next question is about the payments. Can I use a credit card oh, to pay for the application fees? I think, we just fees? I that think. One. yes, we yes, are. You can. Yeah, we did um, answer that. So. Okay, so let's go to the next one. <laughs> can I apply for a social security number on the same day as my CRIBA appointment? Reg, what do you think? Unfortunately, you cannot. As much as we would like to accommodate that, it's a totally different office. Social Security Administration. Um, it's just beside the American Citizen Services windows, but uh, they will have to require to see the CRBA and passport of the child once it's ready for a Social Security number application. Yes, so, so even though we do have Social Security Administration here at the embassy, um, and you could, you could talk to them and get the forms, they won't actually accept the forms until that proof of citizenship is presented with the, the CRBA right. and, the, and the passport.